Good morning and welcome to Grace United Church, Gananoque. Today is April 18th, 2021. I'd like to announce some very important birthdays. They're all important, but one is more important than the others because Helen Merkley is turning 101 years of age next week. Congratulations, Helen. We wish you very well. Now, the other important birthdays are our organist, Paul Harding, Joan Sword, Connie Paddle, Connor Abrams, and I want to wish everybody a very happy birthday. If you'd like to have your birthday or anniversary announced, please contact Lori at the church office to give her the details. Birthdays and anniversaries can only be added with your written consent. Now, I have some meetings to announce. On April 22nd, the trustees um, are meeting at 2 p.m. On April 27th, the stewards are meeting at 3 p.m. And on April 27th, the session is meeting at 7 p.m. And April 29th, at 2 p.m., the official board will be meeting. And these will all be via Zoom. Thank you and enjoy the service. Good and a blessed day, everyone. Welcome to our third Sunday of Easter, where we also celebrate Earth Day, reminding one another how important our actions are, not just towards each other, but also towards Mother Earth. Beloved, as Easter people, we are called to live reconciled lives. Therefore, at this time, we acknowledge all traditional territories, all ceded and unceded lands that we live upon, and give thanks for all the generations of people who have taken care of these lands before us and still do with us today. May we be open to historical truths and may we continue to learn from the past, shape our present time and build a better world with all people. Today, our spiritual focus reminds us that Easter is life persisting with witness and wonder. Let us once again hear the Spirit of God calling us 
through the call of worship as we begin. Dearly beloved, the bread of life opens our eyes. The word of life opens our ears. The risen one shows us God's way and offers peace to all. Let us sing together. This is God's wondrous world. important it is for us to remember that this is God's wondrous world and we are stewards of this earth appointed by God to take care of it. So let us think of actions towards this earth every day and not just once a year on Earth Day, which is April 22nd, but let us always consider our actions daily. Friends, with humbleness, let us pray together the prayer of the day, and we pray as one family. Almighty God, your power makes the lame walk and the dead rise to new life. We give you thanks for your love to be evident to us through Jesus. May we see him among us once again through the mystery of your triune presence, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Beloved, let us sing together our song of illumination as a prayer and be open to hear the scripture for today and the word of hope. Let us sing. Lord, speak to me.
Today's scripture comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. This is the New Revised Translation. Jesus appears to his disciples. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed to them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you nothing here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Here ends today's reading. May we hear the true word and be witnesses of the living Christ. Amen. Friends, would you join me in your hearts for a short word of prayer? Holy One, speak to us through the wounded healer of our lives. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts and minds come from you to transform us and also help us to transform this world that you have made us stewards for. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Dearly beloved, we continue through the season of Easter being reminded that Easter is not just one day in the year, but a season, a way of life. Moreover, we are Easter people. Our faith is grounded in the resurrection of Jesus Christ before there was Christmas, there was Easter. Beloved, Easter is the reality of God's never-ending love, which carries us through life even when darkness surrounds us. Death overpowers us and dismay overwhelms us. But God's love has the last word. Last week, our wonderful Tammy Ferguson called us to come to believe and reminded us how the Spirit of God works in us with joy and how belief requires action on our part. We come to believe. Today, the author of Luke calls us to take the next step. The next step of believing is being a witness, a living witness. Believing is good. Actually, believing is the very first 
step to abundant life. The natural next step after believing is being a witness. Did you hear the scripture today and last week? Jesus greets the fearful disciples by saying, Peace be with you. Jesus knows what fear is all about. Jesus knows what darkness is all about. And how about that heavy weighing of death and disasters? They can weigh us down. Even when we do not know the person who has died personally, there is still something about death that someone can bring tears to our eyes. Just watching portions of Prince Philip's funeral moves us with tears. There is more to life and death that meets our physical eyes, beloved. You know, a few chapters earlier, Luke 22, Jesus was praying with anguish for his own impending death to the point that he prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Luke explains in that chapter that the anguish of Jesus was so heavy that his sweat was like drops of blood. And now, in today's reading, Jesus comes in the middle of fear-filled disciples and says, Peace be with you. He knows how scared they were. And he asks, why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet and shows them his wounded hands and feet. Friends, how much our anxieties and anguishes make us feel like the disciples sometimes. We don't have to go far. We sometimes in these days of COVID, we feel scared in the lockdown in our own places. When people are anxious, I don't know about you, but I know people when they're anxious, they just want to sleep so that when they wake up, everything seems better. And just like the disciples slept, back in the Garden of Gethsemane in chapter 22. While Jesus was praying and when he rose from the prayer and went back to the disciples, he said to them, why are you sleeping? He asked them to get up and pray. And today, Jesus calls the disciples to do more than just prayer. You and I are disciples of Jesus. He calls us to look at his hands and feet and be witnesses of these things. What are these things? These things are the entire life, ministry, death, and the resurrection of Jesus. Being a witness of these things includes all of life, all the pains, all the promises, all the provisions, and all the possibilities of God. Beloved, it is over a year now that we have been living under this heavy cloud of COVID-19. But... This heavy cloud also has given us the opportunities to witness some good stuff. There has been the good, the bad, and the ugly. And sometimes the bad and the ugly has made the good dim. 
But we know deep inside of us that even in the midst of death, in the midst of restrictions and lockdowns, there is good. Because we have experienced goodness. We have experienced newness and kindness. We have learned the essentials of life. We have also learned that relationships are the most precious commodity of life that no money can buy. For many years, we have heard psychologists say relationships are the antidote for depression. But now we have been witnesses to that truth. Just the other day, someone said how much tears of joy are going to flow once we get back to the church building and sing together freely, hug each other, eat together, drink coffee in our pews, and journey together once again without any physical distancing needed. Yes. There will be joy once again. But have you paid attention how churches have evolved and how we have experienced new possibilities? From online virtual worship celebrations to television broadcasts that we never thought were possible. Some churches had no technology at all before COVID, and they were not even thinking about it. You get my drift. And just think about it. Earth Day is being celebrated today. How much we have become environmentally friendly because we have not driven to regional council meetings or other meetings, etc., etc., we have seen new birds around our where we live. We don't know why, but they are here because we have been a little bit more quiet than before. Beloved communities of faith have found new ministers who have answered their calls. I personally know of at least 10 ministers who have answered a new call in the middle of this pandemic. Furthermore, churches are willing to find new ways of ministries. They are getting out of their comfort zones because this pandemic, as hard as it is, it has enlarged their ministry horizons. Friends, the Bible says in Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The provisions and the promises of God overflow in us and make us witnesses as wounded and healed resurrection people. We are called to be Easter people who persist with the wonders of God's love and truth-telling witnesses. Today, do you wonder why Jesus did not say, Hey, listen to my voice when he came into that locked room? Instead, he said, Look at my hands and my feet. Is it because Jesus wants the disciples? Is it because Jesus wants us to be his hands and feet and go out to be the witnesses of the abundant life he offered? You see, when Luke speaks of Jesus showing his wounded hands and feet and asks for food, Luke wants to assure us the hearers, that Jesus is not just a figment of imagination, but Jesus is true presence. Let me repeat that. When Luke speaks of Jesus showing his wounded hands and feet and asking for food, Luke wants to assure us, the hearers, 
that Jesus is not a figment of imagination, but Jesus is true presence. Beloved, you have heard me say this before, and I repeat it because it is important to remember. There is no quick fix to the difficulties of life and the injustices of life. But Jesus invites us to stand in solidarity with the victims of injustice, from Black Lives Matter to indigenous people, from those who have been subjugated to sexism, ageism, sexual orientation, and become the wounded healers like he was and still is through you and me. Resurrection explodes our lives like the lives of the disciples into new possibilities of abundant life. You know, when Jesus says you are witnesses of these things, he told them before he left them, entrusting the world to their care. When that world looks around for the risen Christ, when they want to know what that means, it is us they look at. Not our pretty faces and not our sincere eyes, but our hands and feet. What we have done with them and where we have gone with them. We are witnesses of these things because we still are the body of Christ. Friends, you are wounded and healed witnesses of the wounded healer, Jesus the Christ. Therefore, embrace this reality and commit to be the hands and feet of Jesus no matter where you are found. Thanks be to God. Amen. Beloved, as we celebrate Earth Day, let us remember that our celebration comes with commitment and care. We invite you to hear the following special music for the beauty of the Earth and make a commitment to take care of this Earth. I want to thank Marianne in advance and Paul Harding for all these special musics for the beauty of the earth.
Good morning, friends. Dave Charles here, your mission and service enthusiast for Grace United Church. Today's Your Generosity Matter is called Church Grounds Bring Hope During COVID-19. Spring finds many of us rolling up our sleeves to freshen up our gardens and landscapes. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, Mount Forest United Church is taking a fresh approach to landscaping. Beyond planting the church's flower beds, Mount Forest United considers the outside of their church grounds to be an opportunity to extend beauty and hope to their community. Through artistic installations, the church is actively sharing the church Christian message. On Easter morning, the congregation conveyed the resurrection message of hope by placing a massive cross formed from pots of daffodils on the church steps in front of a purple draped backdrop. On Pentecost, the congregation is planning to illuminate the front of the church with red floodlights. Other interactive installations invite community participation. For example, to focus on the stewardship value of, the gratitude, of gratitude, the church placed a large blackboard on the front lawn along with the invitation to anyone passing by to write whatever they were thankful for on it. Despite the challenges of this time, they expressed thanksgiving for friends, birds, health, sun, and sky, even mercy, says Reverend Cheryl Spencer, the congregation's minister, adding on Mother's Day, Christian Family Sunday, we put a large container of carnations on the church steps with instructions for passerbys to take one in celebration. Mount Forest is also getting creative with their broadcast ministry. For almost 50 years, the congregation has broadcast worship service with two cable companies and now a radio station. Now the church is encouraging listeners to consider their own private outdoor space holy ground for May 21st service. We recorded completely outside and included clips from folks explaining how they're finding God in their own backyard, said Reverend Spencer. Mount Forest has received many mission service supported Embracing the Spirit grants to support innovative projects, says Carla Leon, who heads innovation and special projects for the EDGE Network for ministry development. We are finding that supporting creative approaches to ministry in one area of the church life inspires a creative approach in other areas. So one grant can contribute to an innovative approach to ministry overall. Embracing the Spirit isn't just about one project. It's about culture shift that will create a path of future. We're seeing that creativity expressed during COVID-19. Your gifts through mission service support innovative ministries that make a difference during the COVID-19 pandemic. I thank you for your support and hope you have a great week. Take care. Our generosity truly matters and it makes a difference. Thanks for the reminder, David. At this time, we come to the part of our worship celebration where we praise God with our gifts and offerings. But our giving is not limited to just that. Our givings help the light of Christ spread throughout the world. Beloved, our offerings, our gifts to God is the lighthouse where the light of Christ is spread. So we invite you to take the time and give as you are able to the work of God through Grace United Church so that we can continue to do the mission of God. You may partner up with us in many forms, as you can see. We are a small community of faith, but we know together we can do great things through God's great love. No matter what the amount of the donation is, the Lord will sanctify and multiply them. And we can tell you confidently, you make a difference to transform this world. And we are grateful for all 
You do. Thank you. Now, as one family, let us pray together the prayer of thanksgiving and dedication. Lord God, we offer to you only a portion of what you have given us. All that we have is from your provisional care. All that we can give away, we do through the love of Jesus. All our renewal comes from the Holy Spirit's wisdom. Deal graciously with this gift so that others may have joy and we continue to be your true witnesses. We pray sincerely. Amen. Beloved, let us prepare our hearts for the prayers of hope and healing as we sing together, Lord, listen to your children praying. And we sing. Beloved, come to this time of prayer confidently because we know God hears our prayers and provides all our needs. Come to this time of prayer with peace because the creator of heaven and earth has called you beloved and has called you to be co-creators of a better world. Let us pray. Holy One, as the risen Christ opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures and gave them power through the Holy Spirit to walk boldly in this world, open our minds today to the healing, wisdom, and faith given in your word. Your word made flesh, Christ Jesus. Prince of Peace, as Jesus showed his wounded hands and feet to the terrified disciples, reveal to us your body, the church, the wounds of our neighbors, the fears of individuals and families, and the avenues towards healing. We pray, O oh God, as we know you hear our prayers and your mercy is great. Author of life, we beg for peace among nations, peace throughout communities, peace within families. Guide leaders and voters, legislatures and parliaments, judges and juries to work towards a just world. Teach diplomacy and let our ways be formed so that all creatures, plants and people may have plenty with peace. Give us courage to stand up in solidarity with all who need care and kindness. We pray, O oh God, as we know you hear our prayers, and your mercy is great. Light in our darkness, 
Let your brightness burn in the places shrouded in violence. Reveal the pains that are hidden in secret. Unveil the needs of our own hearts so that we may know the power of vulnerability. Jesus was raised to life even from the grave. Today we seek to see you once again and to be reminded that death is defeated. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Healer of our every ill, we pray for all who are in need, for refugees of war and all who are displaced by storms, we pray for all who are fighting COVID-19 in different ways. For rescue workers and medical teams. For those whose bones are weary. For those who show us the power of community. And they give us hope. They give hope to the frightened. And for all who have asked for our prayers, we lift them up. We pray, O oh God, as we know you hear our prayers and your mercy is great. Today, we specially pray for all who have died and all those who are feeling the pain of physical loss. We specially pray for the queen as she mourns the loss of her late husband for 73 years, Prince Philip. We pray, O oh God, that she will be strengthened to carry on as she begins her 95th year of life on Wednesday. We also pray for all the royal family and all the families of the world where they need peace and love to abound. You command us to bring to you our deepest desires, O oh God. So we pray for all of our personal cares and concerns. Trusting in your abundant mercy, we command into your care all for whom we pray and our own lives as well. Through Jesus Christ, we pray the words that he taught his followers and we say together as one family, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us continue our life of commitment to the ministry of God with our song of going forth. All the way my Savior leads me. Let us sing together as wounded and healed witnesses of love.
Dearly beloved, you have seen the wounded healer. You have heard his voice calling you to touch his wounds and be healed. Therefore, go and be witnesses to all who come your way. Live with hope. Share with joy. Withhold your anger. Shed your disappointments. Turn to all people with gentleness. And now, may the Lord bless and keep you. May God's face keep on shining upon you. And may you see all the promises and the provisions of God in and around you always. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.